Ignatius uh, for several hours last night. It certainly appeared that the United States and Iran were on a pathway, an inescapable pathway to war, a widespread war where, where retaliation would meet retaliation, <clears throat> airstrike would meet airstrike. Um, and yet we wake up this morning, uh, and, and certainly it seemed obvious when Donald Trump decided not to address the nation last night, that the United States did not respond. And in fact, Iran's response was in, indeed calculated, uh, proportional. And if you believe that they intentionally struck the base, but uh, did what they could to limit the loss of lives, it was actually uh, remarkably restrained. Uh, we wake up this morning with both sides saying, no mas. Mm -hmm. Certainly, Joe, the, the initial feeling uh, is, is one of uh, relief that we didn't go into a second spasm of retaliation and counter retaliation. Uh, military strategists often talk in crises like this about linkages and how tight the linkages are between action and reaction. And what we saw sensibly from President Trump was that the linkages were loosened that there was no immediate reaction from the White House. And then when it came, uh, it was the tweet that, sh that you read uh, in terms of casualties, uh, so far so good, all is well, reassuring words, not the kind of words that typically precede uh, a sharp additional escalation. So I think by, by, by uh, opening up the, the tight linkages, they gave themselves some time to think and look. Uh, we'll have to see what the president says today. I think this is still uh, a crisis that could quickly back, get back into the action-reaction cycle. Uh, I mm -hmm. think what we should all think about is this crisis has been, has been building for 40 years since the Iranian Revolution of 1979. We've talked about war, how close we were to war over all those four decades. Now it's really here. And yes, we, we want to see de-escalation, but I think people should focus on the diplomatic question. How do we get off the path that we've been on so that this crisis could have happened in the first place uh, and begin a, a process of bending towards some relationship where we're talking to Iran about mutual problems and hopefully solving them? This Cold War has, has gotten hotter, obviously, over the past six months to a year, Willie. Uh, but last night, the Iranians saying, we do not seek escalation. Donald Trump seeming to back away uh, from, from possible retaliatory strikes as well. For now, uh, the, what appeared to be a hot war has cooled down. Yeah, the worst case scenario so far, and I do emphasize so far, has not played out. Last night, uh, we know that the United States had some warning because of its detect detection systems that ballistic missiles were inbound from Iran, perhaps giving our military personnel and those we fight with from other countries time to seek cover. So our first thoughts are with those men and women who serve overseas and their families back here and hoping that the reports of no casualties hold up this morning. Um, Richard, you and I were talking before we came on the air. And my question to you is, who is the person around Donald Trump who either walked in the room last night or can walk in the room again this morning and say to him, Mr. President, enough. We've achieved our objective here. We took General Soleimani off the battlefield. The price, if there are no casualties here, is relatively small, we hope. Stop now. Who's saying that to him? And do you think he continues the tone and posture he had last night in that tweet when he speaks to the country later this morning? The short answer is we don't know. In my own experience in government, it was often the military leadership that would be more likely to do that, whereas civilians had a, a more ideological approach to the use of military force. At the end of the day, it's soldiers who have to do it and are on the receiving end. And they, they've often been more careful. It may have also been someone from the outside, from Mr. Trump's political base, because what was so odd about the last few days is everything he was doing was inconsistent with this idea of getting out of the Middle East, of America first. He was going down a path that was something he had campaigned against. So it's possible he had been reminded of, of that. But I want to come back to something David was, was alluding to. None of the underlying causes or factors has been eliminated. And I think what's so interesting about the speech we're going to hear this morning 
is whether the president begins to move this away from uh, a confrontation. And we got lucky last night. The Iran may have threaded the needle, done something, but not caused enough harm. But are we going to say, for example, that we accept the Iranian regime? Our goals are not regime change. Are we going to say that the time has come to have something that would put a different dynamic in place, that we are prepared to consider an end to or reduction in economic warfare in exchange for Iran doing this on nuclear, this on missiles, this on its regional behavior. Essentially, can we compete with the military dynamic by introducing a, di a diplomatic dynamic? That's one of the things I'm looking for. Admiral Stavridis, uh, there was something, uh, especially as I woke up this morning and uh, replayed the events in my mind, uh, there was, and, and by the way, I hope this is the case, uh, there's something, there seemed to be something very choreographed about everything that happened <laughs> last night. You had the president, mm. the vice president, members of his cabinet sitting in the White House in the late afternoon, knowing an attack was coming. <clears throat> the Iranians launched those attacks. Uh, they struck an American base, uh, so they're seen as the winner uh, by uh, their people, uh, announced incorrectly that 30 Americans had been killed immediately. Uh, but uh, reports, initial reports, again, suggest no Americans were killed. They then came out, and, and what's the word? We do not seek escalation. They said, we seek no escalation. This is done. Donald Trump responded likewise. I just... I, I, I it, it, it does seem very choreographed, and I just wonder if a third party got involved and uh, hmm. may have called the president or someone else. You know, that's an interesting uh, speculation, Joe. And, of course, there was uh, a meeting with a Saudi official yesterday. There have been flickers of that kind of mediation over time. Um, I think, frankly, we just got lucky. Uh, always in a choice between a, a, a very clever move and things just work out, Occam's razor, uh, the simplest answer is also the right one. My sense is the Iranians launched uh, big, relatively dumb cruise missiles. These are not precision guided. They didn't zone in to go after the mess hall right at dinner. This was the minimum they could do. And therefore, I think we kind of are at last exit before the tunnel on this round. But as, mm -hmm. the, as, as both David and, uh, and my good friend Richard have said, the longer term process here has got to resolve this uh, lingering uh, bitterness and hatred between the United States and Iran. So here's what I'm hoping and watching for. Um, A, that the Iranians do not take another bite at the apple. I don't think they will, but watch, watch the Arabian mm -hmm. Gulf, watch our ships at sea. Uh, number can, two. Can, can, can I stop you there for an admiral? Can I stop you on number one? Because you just said something that, again, I, I, for Americans that have not followed Iran as closely as you have since 1979, the thing that has always struck me, and I'm sure it struck you, yes, they've been the epicenter of terrorism since 1979. Yes, we consider them for good reason to be a terrorist regime who considers the United States and Israel an enemy. At the same time, like the old Soviet Union, they, all, they too have been conservative with a small C. They do not swing wildly like Al Qaeda. They do not swing right. wildly like ISIS. There is a reason why this regime has survived since 1979. Is there not? And, it, and in part, it's because they know when to say when. That's right. Another way to put it, Joe, is um, they have ideology, they have religion, they have goals but they are not reckless and they are definitely not suicidal. So watch what happens in the Arabian Gulf to see if they take another bite at the apple. I don't think they will. Watch cyber. That shoe has mm -hmm. yet to drop. And let us hope that this will be a moment where someone can come in and, and maybe negotiate this. And I'll close by saying uh, this is where the Europeans, who have been kind of on the fence uh, in some ways, could step up, look for someone like Ursula uh, von der Leyen, the new head of the European Union, very capable former German defense minister. I know her well. She could lead an effort. We could get into mediation. I think this is a cautiously hopeful moment. We'll know a lot more as the day unfolds.
Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.